uh, or weak acid and weak uh, base titrations are going to be a little bit different. Okay. One thing that's initially different is that if you look at this strong acid, strong base titration, the slope of this line is pretty much linear. As you add the strong base, the pH goes up in a linear fashion. For uh, weak acids, it always sort of goes up fast and then it slows down before it goes back up. That's why when I drew this one, I, I drew that curve kind of like that before, you know, pH 10. That's because as you start to um, titrate your weak acid, you start to produce a weak base. Well, let's write an equation for that. All right, so what weak acid do we want to titrate? Acetic acid? Good, good choice. Which you did. You titrated acetic acid uh, to determine in vinegar. Remember that? Everybody high five afterwards? All right, so let's uh, titrate it with. Uh, we need a strong base. Formate wood. Nacho would have been a, uh, a base. It's a weak base, though, so we needed to go to completion. So, any particular hydroxide? We just use sodium hydroxide. What's it? Potassium? Potassium's a good choice. All right. So your usually go-to strong bases are going to be sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. They're group one, so there's high solubilities, and sodium and potassium uh, are a lot cheaper than lithium. Okay, lithium hydroxide is a lot more expensive. So we don't. Hey, come on, we're on a budget around you here. Okay, that's, that's like University of Miami. <laughs> they use lithium hydroxide. They got to spend that salary or that tuition somehow. It's expensive. All right, so acetic acid plus potassium hydroxide. What are going to be my, actually, mm, yeah, that's okay. Uh, what are going to be my products? Potassium acetate, so KC2H3O2, good. And water, good. You're always going to make water. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So, we got acetic acid uh, neutralized by potassium hydroxide and uh, making potassium acetate and water. Now, if acetic acid is a weak acid, what is acetate? It's a base, and it's a, it's a weak base, but it would be its conjugate base, right? So it's a weak base. So at the equivalence point, you've added just enough potassium hydroxide to neutralize all of the acetic acid. So there's no acetic acid or potassium hydroxide left. All you have is potassium acetate and water. And if uh, potassium acetate, or acetate really, I mean potassium is going to be a spectator on, if acetate is a weak base, what's that going to make the pH of the solution? Above seven, higher. It's going to be basic. Okay. So for a weak acid, strong base titration, the equivalence point is always greater than seven. For a weak acid, strong base titration, because you're going to produce the conjugate weak base. Uh, no, so the strong base, because of the reciprocal nature of the conjugates, remember the stronger the acid, the weaker the base. So if you have a strong acid, a strong base, they're going to make a neutral solution. So that's why this is always pH 7. They're always going to be neutral. For the weak acid, since you're making the conjugate base, the pH is going to be um, greater than 7, which is a little bit trickier because we don't know where exactly it is. Unless we know the pKa of that weak acid, uh, we won't be able to, and the concentration, we won't be able to predict where that equivalence point occurs. So we got to think about how we, later I'll show you how we really uh, determine where that, that is. Now for a, I don't have much room, but I'll sneak it down here. For a weak base, strong acid, 
titration, what would that look like? Well, if we plotted volume as a function, or volume, pH as a function of volume, those are the words I want to say. All right, so now we're starting with the weak base as our sample. Question? For the weak base, you're going to start out at a high pH because it's a base. And then as you add the uh, strong acid, it's going to lower it, and so it's going to come down, and then it will reach, you know, it will go through that really steep point when the hydronium concentration is really low, and then it will level off to the pH of the acid solution. Okay. So it will look like this, but again, sort of mirror image or upside down. Now for the weak base, after you neutralize all the weak base, you're going to make its conjugate acid. So what do you think the pH is going to be at the equivalence point for a weak base titration? It'll be, since we're making the acid, it's conjugate acid at the equivalence point, it'll be acidic. So if this is 7, the equivalence point will be The pH at the equivalence point will be less than 7 for the weak base strong acid titration. <coughs> I mean, if you wanted to write an equation, all right, so let's think about, let's make ammonia. Let's react it with HCl. That's a strong acid. So ammonia is our weak base, neutralized by the HCl. What's the ammonia going to do? It's a weak base, so it's going to it's going to make a weak acid. What's it going to do with HCl? It's going to accept or donate. Accept. It's going to accept. So that H is going to come over to make NH, NH4 plus. plus plus chloride. And so if NH3 is a weak acid, and it's not, it's not at all, it's a weak base, that's what we're talking about. NH3 is a weak base. Its conjugate would be a weak acid. So ammonium is a weak acid, or a wah, still doing that.